everybody, Ty Metalhead Weatherman here. I'm going to be dropping an update on the severe weather threat we have for today. We now have an enhanced risk here. I was reading through the uh, synopsis a little bit earlier because we now have a hatched risk introduced for both the damaging wind and the hail threat today. We actually have a 30% area, which is going to be our level three, and then our hatched risk is going to entail the threat of both damaging winds of possibly even above 70 miles an hour could even be up to hurricane force gusts with a line of storms that were anticipated later this afternoon into the evening and maybe even overnight and also of course hail greater than two inches in diameter tornado threats also gone up we have the five percent area here to go along with that and then we have a secondary over here towards boston massachusetts and also springfield we have to keep an eye on that area as we go throughout the day as well but most of our attention in the video here is going to be mainly over towards the midwest and northern plains region we're looking at the models here we've been talking about the storm system uh, intermittently through the last few videos we've been trying to kind of balance a lot here but this is our storm system you see this adjacent ridge to go along with it that's going to be the catalyst behind our set setup today or this really this evening because things really don't start to kick off until i would say about six o'clock eastern and from that point is when that line of storms kind of takes off from that point you can see it with the short waves even just looking at this level of the atmosphere really you would want to look a little lower into the atmosphere but this setup is so potent that you can even see it in the upper levels the next section we will be looking at is the mid levels as we go further forward and this is going to last Ooh, a good chunk of the evening here there's a lot of energy over this environment between south dakota and particularly over towards minnesota i was about to call it minneapolis and this is going to linger into the overnight here of course the setup is going to carry over into the next day but of course we'll talk about that probably tomorrow morning because we'll, we'll be live later today to cover this but in any case let's go to the next level of the atmosphere here is where that short wave will become much more pronounced as time goes on. Here's a better look at that. We also have really strong mid-level winds here. So that's another reason why that damaging threat, wind threat is so high. So we continue to move forward here. That only amplifies as we get later into the evening. This will be about, I would say, midnight Eastern, so 11 o'clock Central. And this is really starting to ramp, only really starting to ramp up at this point. It's not going to be till later in the evening where this thing will start to die down and it's still going to have plenty of energy along with it. there still will be a chance for severe storms to exist all the way into the next morning which is about the current time that we're doing this video this is about maybe 5 45 a.m eastern at, that we're starting this video and then by 12 z that's about seven eight o'clock eastern so by sunset tomorrow we could still see severe storms all the way in wisconsin which is actually really impressive you don't see those kinds of setups too often during the summertime now with the tornado threat this is where we start to look at the 850 here there's not much in the way of southerly flow as we get into the afternoon or evening a lot of that really isn't going to be in place but there is going to be a little corridor here mainly towards the southern parts of south dakota that i might be interested in for the development of tornadoes it's probably going to be on more so on the south side of the line maybe even towards the center where there's going to be low pressure existing here and counterclockwise wind i think that will help trigger a few tornadoes i'm not expecting necessarily an outbreak of tornadoes of course with this setup but this will be sufficient enough to get at least maybe a couple but i think the main story of course is going to be the damaging winds hail is going to be pretty significant as well like i said the environment's really primed for this kind of event here as we go through the day here, we see the uh, moisture kind of rushing towards where our storms are going to end up firing here. So it's another uh, it's another tick mark here for the environment, so to speak. We already knew that there was going to be a good moisture set up well in advance, and we're going to get some extra to go along with it. You can actually even see the shape of the uh, bow echo that's going to be forming a little later here. If you look really closely, you see how this kind of curves out a little bit. There's a good look at what we can anticipate later this evening. So we continue to go forward here. You can see that we're still going to have ample moisture out ahead of the line, even as we head into tomorrow morning here. So like I said, there's not much reason for me to believe that we still wouldn't get severe storms all the way into the next morning once these gets going. 
there is a chance that we could end up having a derecho as well, really, given the environment. So if we go to what our instability is looking like, this is our mixed layer cape, you can actually see how much energy there is in the atmosphere with this convective available potential energy. And as we get later into the evening, this is where our storm's fire eats up the cape that's available over here. And it's really not going to be later into the evening where it gets into that really peak environment, that uh, peak environment, which is going to be here over towards southern parts of South Dakota into parts of Minnesota here. And even Iowa, we have 4,500 plus joules per kilogram in Cape. And this is an environment that would be primed for damaging winds in particular. Looking at the sounding here may seem foreign to you guys, but interesting things to note here is the cloud bases are pretty low with this as well lapse rates are pretty high so the hail threat's going to be notable but like i said even though it shows the probable hazard type for tornado the low level winds at this point in time not that impressive we'll probably jump this maybe one or two hours here just to make sure we have an idea of what's going on a little bit later which would be towards peak time Low level winds do actually increase just a little bit here. So like I said, threat isn't zero. I have to keep an eye on it, but the damaging wind threat, which is represented by this D cape uh, parameter here is nearing a thousand. And usually you would want, you would look for a threshold of about maybe 600. So we're well beyond the mark at this point here. So that being said, could be a pretty busy night here. A lot to really uh, keep a close eye on as we get into the evening. So as we get later into the evening, into the overnight here, you can see that even in Iowa, parts of Minnesota here, we still have plenty of energy left to go. And we even move this along, like I said, even into the morning hours, we still have Cape that's above, a, above 2,000 joules per kilogram. Threshold to keep severe thunderstorms going is right about a, like maybe 1,000, 1,500. Then we're nearing 2,000. Some places still sitting above 3,000. So good reason to believe that even in the morning, we could still get severe reports coming in. So very long duration event on the way. A big part of why we have such an unstable atmosphere and why that threat for hail also is so high is because of our lapse rates being so steep. So basically we're measuring the rate of temperature change within the atmosphere here, basically from the mid levels to the high levels. So the steeper the lapse rate or the higher the lapse rate temperature that you're seeing here in Celsius, like getting towards sevens, eights, and some places even nines, the more unstable the atmosphere becomes. And like, like I said before, with the unstable environment that we have over here, especially towards where our initiation point is going to be, where the lapse rates are ridiculous, we're going to be able to keep these storms going for a while here. And the lapse rates are actually really impressive over towards our area where I'm expecting the most severe weather. So like over here towards the Dakotas, we're dealing with sixes, sevens, and eights. Usually seven is about the threshold for our lapse rate here. Seven point, and we're seeing 7.2, 7.5. This is after the peak point. So right here towards, let's say southern parts of South Dakota, maybe even south central South Dakota, lapse rate of eight. So. I think I've pretty much made my point with that there. That being said, we'll go on ahead and take a look at one other parameter that I usually don't show too much unless I'm looking for a particular element here. And of course, with damaging winds being the threat, we're gonna be looking at the bulk shear. Of course, as we get later into the evening, that's when we expect to see things really ramp up with this area over here. You can see easily up to 60, 50, 60, even up to 70 knots. So. A lot of wind shear to work with for this uh, bow echo that we're anticipating later this evening. It could, there isn't too, too much in the way of fail parameters, so I have a pretty good confidence to believe that this is going to occur. So I'll have to watch out for that. And then, of course, on Tuesday, we'll have to keep an eye on things as well beyond that point here. So last but not least here, through breaking everything down, this is what our composite uh, reflectivity forecast is. Uh, be watchful of the uh, helicity streaks that you'll see on the screen here as we get later into the evening. This is our bow echo starting to form here. This will be about 6 o'clock central time. And you'll begin to see things really take off once we get past the sunset here. So this will be about 8 o'clock central. Southern end of that line is really starting to pick up here. And I think that's where we're likely to see the strongest winds. 
and also a secondary cluster develops over here towards Minnesota, Wisconsin to go along with that. And this complex goes on well into the overnight hours at this point. By the time we get towards 11, 12 Z, which would be again about seven o'clock central, you can see complex still looks pretty strong here. We're not seeing the helicity streaks anymore or updraft helicity, but I do think that we'll be able to see this hold out for a bit longer. Also, while we're at it here, I'm going to take a look at the Northeast. And while the setup isn't nearly as impressive, we could still see a little something go off here in the early parts of the afternoon. I don't expect coverage to be uh, immense, but definitely something to keep an eye on. Interesting to note here that we're going to be kind of on, on a uh, north to south track here. So while I won't expect a line, what, while I wouldn't expect a line of storm, some of these could be pretty intense as well. So a lot to keep track of today. And of course we have the following day. We'll take it one day at a time. Either way, I appreciate you all tuning in. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, take care and have an awesome rest of your day. It's time, Tired Metal Weatherman, sign off. It's time to go to work.